But my point to you is, if you're not looking at where the trends are going, and if you're not analyzing what your business is and where the trends are going, you're only, only going to be put in your heels. All right, so that's a bit of a digression. Let me take you back to Never Eat Alone. And I want to land, it was really wonderful. I had a young man, I think his name was John, who works at, uh, at, at WD, came up to me this morning and says, your book Never Eat Alone really changed my life. And I said, well, tell me what I should tell this group that you took away from the book that was meaningful to you. And he really pointed out two very simple things, um, one of which I've already pointed out, and then the other one I want to sort of land uh, a, little, a little stronger. The first thing he said was, building relationships is not a transaction. Building relationships is not a transaction. And what I talked to you about earlier, the most important thing about building relationships in a work environment is generosity. And what I always think about when I identify, and I would like all of you to think about this, who are the 20 most important people to your future success? You have ever written that down? Who are the 20 most important people to your future, future success? Well, and by the way, this is something that when we have a client that we're coaching an executive team, I always just on the side take the executive, the CEO, through this exercise. And I've done this with the CEOs of the biggest companies in the world, Accenture and others. It's a very elegant question. But if I were to ask you, who are the 20 people that are most important to your success? You'd say, well, what, which constituencies? What do you mean? And I said, exactly. You know, maybe, of course, if you're at the stage of your life where you're thinking about the succession plan for your company, then that person might be somebody who's in that succession plan. Right? It might be the acquisition partners that you might want to be selling your company to. It might be the individuals that you need to continue to keep the growth forward, some of your most critical sales individuals. It might be some of your most important prospects or clients that you couldn't possibly afford to lose at this stage. It might be the person who's sitting right next to you. I don't know if that's the love of your life or have a coworker. I'm not going to, maybe it's both. But anyway, um, you know, it might be the individual that's that wind beneath your wings that and by the way, I, I work with a lot, of a lot of individuals that as they're approaching retirement, one of the scariest things that they have to approach is the relationship that is about to become more primary than it ever was before because of what retirement might look like in terms of the amount of time that those two people are going to stay together and be together, but they don't really know what that looks like or how they would be, how they would coexist with each other in an environment where that person's not feeling, spending all of their time at work. So it takes investment. And, and one of the things I would recommend is that you, you have that list of those 20 people. And then once you really solidify, I, I always call it a bullseye pie. You take a pie chart and you say, if you were to put the 20 most important people, what percentage of those would be what constituencies? How many of them are prospects? How many of them are clients? How many of them are your own people? How many of them are investors? How many of them are whatever they are, right? And then you ask yourself, of those individuals, am I showing up? Am I showing up with extreme generosity to all of those individuals? What would it mean to them to do that? To show up with extreme generosity, I always ask myself, every conversation I have with somebody that matters to me, can I show up with five packets of gener generosity? I mean, literally, I think about that. What are five packets of generosity? Obviously, some of the, sometimes the stuff you have to sell to somebody is a packet of generosity, but you're only allowed one thing of the five to be something you're making money from. So what are the four things that as you show up to somebody who's important to you that's, that you know is deeply important to them that you're being of service to them? In the B2B world, their future career is so important, of course, right? So always, I always have in my head, how do I help another person's career? When I went out to Los Angeles in 2000, I left working at um, Starwood Hotels for Barry Sternlich. And I went out to, um, to Los Angeles to work for Mike Milken. And Mike taught me something, health, wealth, and children. Three things that are most important in a person's life is their own personal health, their wealth, and the ability to be of service to them and the work that they do, and children. You know, you look at an individual and you ask them, can I help their kids get an internship? Can I help their grandkids get a whatever? Five packets of generosity, constantly thinking about that in your head proactively when you show up. Not what you're trying to get out of an individual, which is a transactional relationship, but what you have to give, right? That was probably one of the great things. We call that building a wrap, a relationship action plan. Now, the next thing underneath a wrap, once you're purposeful about relationships, and by the way, just because you're purposeful doesn't mean you're fake. Because the next thing is when you show up with that individual, it's so important that you're showing up with authenticity. And what I don't know that this audience, finance people don't tend to have this in abundance, um, not authenticity, I'm not suggesting that. Finance people don't have to have an abundance vulnerability. But I have to say that the golden key 
for getting to another individual's loyal relationship and heart is your willingness to open vulnerably to another human. And that's not always easy or comfortable for everybody. But for instance, when you're having a dinner party, it's one thing to pull a group of people together for dinner. It's another thing to have those people engineered when they leave to give a damn and care deeply about each other because you were the host. What does that mean? Let me explain two different dinner parties. One dinner party is just that. I'm going to pull everybody together that seems to be interesting to me. We're going to bring their spouses and we're all going to have a lovely conversation. But tell me generally what kind of conversation topics ha are there had. You talk about your kids, you talk about work, you talk a little bit about what's going on in the environment. I'm trying to say where, how deeply you scratch the surface. Or even just think about last night. What were the conversations you had last evening? 